Sheriff's RSAT grant. And the second one will be 10A, which is an which is a proposal for an ARPA revenue replacement decision by the Board of Commissioners. Uh, Ms. White will present that, I believe, if not her. Mr. Sims and I will present it. Yeah. And yeah. we will need a under item number 13, that will require a motion to enter into an IGA with the City of Covington. So the agenda will have those three additions. Okay. Okay. We'll talk about it. Just okay. okay. So um, could we have a second? We had a motion. Then we need a second, then discussion, if there's a second. second. Okay, there's a, been a motion by commission, motion by Commissioner Edward, uh, uh, second by uh, District 2 Commissioner Mason. Discussion. discussion. All in favor? Call for discussion. Well, discussion. Right. Can we expound on what the proposal for the ARPA revenue decision is? Because I don't remember us discussing that with the ARPA committee. Yes, and we, we did discuss it briefly. Um, the ARPA rules authorize a local government to utilize ARPA funds, and in, in the instance of Newton County, up to $10 million of ARPA funds to replace lost revenue. and. We think it's appropriate that the board actually vote on the decision as to whether or not to utilize those ARPA funds for that purpose or to continue to use them for the purposes that the board has already designated. So this is just for discussion, not a vote? Well, it'll be for discussion and a vote, and the vote okay. can be to not if that's what the ultimate decision is. Okay. Yeah, because I don't remember us actually a question is to be on the agenda. There have been a motion and there have been a second. All in favor? <clears throat> Who seconded? Okay. Commission. Um, Mason. Uh, Commissioner Edwards. I mean, uh, Commissioner Cowan. Motion. Correct. Okay, Edward and Mason, okay. Uh, all in favor? All opposed? Okay. It's past three, uh, three, two. Okay, next on the agenda is the citizens comment. Next on the agenda is the citizens comment. Hey, all right, agenda top is only it's three minutes. It's three minutes. It's three minutes for citizen comment. Any, okay, here come one, one citizen to make a comment. Thank you. 
Mary Cherry James. Yes, ma'am. 160 Cherry Hollis Court, Covington, Georgia. I'm Berna Dixon, and I'm uh, 6577 Randall Mark Drive in Marlow, Georgia. We're here with representing the Newton County Historical Committee, and we're asking for funds for our Juneteenth parade. Yeah, we was here last year uh, asking for funds. Yes, ma'am. And we noticed that they're giving uh, ten thousand dollars for fireworks. If if we could, mm -hmm. and and I don't I don't mean to to, to stop you, but it's for agenda topics items only. And at the end of the meeting, I think if I'm correct, at the end of the meeting you can. The end. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay, I thought it was I'm, open. To I'm me. sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. We, oh. oh. Okay, uh, forgive me. But the fireworks. Okay, so if. It, yeah, we talk about fireworks. We, we want to see can we get funds just like uh, this man is going to get uh, money for the fireworks. I see she's shaking her head. We're not supposed to talk about it or what? Okay. Yeah, probably a more appropriate at the end. At the end? Okay. Are there any more agenda topics? We'll be back. Okay. Are there any agenda topics? Amen. Are there any more comments? If there are, will you please come up, come up front? Talk about agenda, agenda topics only, what's, what's on the agenda. If you'd like to discuss a topic that's on the agenda now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, since, since, since there are no more, this session is closed. And next, number six, is to chairman our, our report. And so we're going to have special recognition proclamations for Ms. Deanna. If she would please come. Okay. Good evening. Thank you, commissioners, for having me here this evening. Um, my name is Deanna Fort. Thank you. My name is Deanna Fort, and I'm here on behalf of a Child's Voice Child Advocacy Center. We're one of 52 child advocacy centers in the state of Georgia, um, and we work alongside law enforcement, DFACs in the district attorney's office, and investigations of child abuse um, and witness, child witness to violent crime. Um, so we provide various forensic services as well as support services through our agency and those include forensic interviews, um, forensic medical exams, as well as family advocacy and resource support services. Um, in Newton County last year, we served 118 children, 98 of those referrals coming from the Newton County Sheriff's Office, 16 or 13 coming from um, Covington Police Department, and then several others coming from other law enforcement agencies across the state, um, serving children who live here in Newton County. Another part of our focus of our um, agency is providing prevention and education services within the community. And so that's why I'm here tonight because April is designated as Child Abuse Prevention Month throughout the nation. Um, so we do a lot of recognition and education within the community during this month. Um, so I'm here tonight to um, have a public proclamation read for Child Abuse Prevention Month for this year. So we appreciate your support and for having us here to be recognized this evening um, because we could not do the work that we do without community support and without your support. So we appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Ford. I'm going to read a proclamation of the Newton County Board of Commissioners and then I think the board will go present this to you. 
Whereas, according to the maltreatment report prepared by the Children's Bureau of the United States Department of Health and Human Services, there were 618,000 confirmed cases of child abuse and or neglect in America in 2020. Whereas, the Georgia Family Connection Partnership reports that there are 166 substantiated cases of child abuse and or neglect in Newton County, Georgia in 2019. And in 2021, a Child's Voice Child Advocacy Center responded to 118 cases of child physical abuse, sexual abuse, and or witness to violent crime in Newton County, Georgia by conducting forensic interviews, forensic medical examinations, and family support services. Whereas the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention suggests that reported cases of child abuse may underestimate the true occurrence and estimates that one in four American children experience some form of child mis maltreatment in their lifetimes. And according to Darkness to Light, victims of child abuse are significantly more likely to experience emotional, psychological, health, and behavioral issues. And with a strong support system and effective counseling, children are able to heal from physical and sexual abuse. And whereas children's advocacy centers, like A Child's Voice, work within the community to spread awareness about child abuse, teach citizens how to recognize the signs and respond to child abuse, and utilize a multidisciplinary approach to coordinating care for families, with the help of law enforcement, DFACs, district attorney's offices, school systems and mental health counselors. Whereas a child, a child's voice advocacy center invites all residents of the Newton County to participate in Child Abuse Prevention Month in April of 2022 by sharing their time and talents to help create better, brighter futures for children and their families. Now, therefore, the Newton County Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim April 1 through 30th, 2022 as Child Abuse Prevention Month in Newton County and encourages all residents to become aware of the prevalence of child abuse in our community and to learn how to properly recognize, respond to, and prevent instances of child physical or sexual abuse by supporting children and families and the agencies that serve them in Newton County. All right, thank you. The next proclamation on the term report is the county attorneys. If you'd be so kind to read it for me. Thrive. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. I will read another proclamation. Whereas the nation's 3,069 counties, parishes, and boroughs serve more than 315 million Americans and provide essential services to create healthy, safe, and vibrant communities. And whereas counties provide public health services, administer justice, keep communities safe, foster economic opportunities, and much more. And whereas Newton County and all counties take pride in our responsibility to protect and enhance the health, well-being, and safety of our residents in efficient and cost-effective ways. 
whereas under the leadership of the National Association of Counties President Larry Johnson, NACO is demonstrating how counties thrive, especially in supporting residents and businesses during the coronavirus pandemic. And whereas each year since 1991, NACO has encouraged counties across the country to elevate awareness of county responsibilities, programs, and services. And whereas Newton County serves more than 113,000 residents and tens of thousands of visitors each year. Whereas the departments and offices of Newton County employs approximately 700 people to serve the county's residents in matters of public safety, the judiciary, transportation, development, and building, recreation, and other government services. And whereas Newton County's elected officials represent their constituents with honesty and fairness to include being an exceptional place to live, work, and play, and one of the finest counties in the country. Now, therefore, the Newton County Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim April 2022 as National County Government Month and encourages all county officials, employees, and residents to join in the appreciation for Newton County and the terrific people who keep it running each and every day. If we could have Ms. Sarah Hall come up and talk about the Hard Hat in Hand program, if she's here. Okay. So next on the agenda is the uh, the, uh, uh, the report from the county manager, Mr. Jarvis Sims. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, this. We, we do not have a report. Okay. Uh, number seven, the report from ICM. Okay. Next is number eight is unfinished business consent agenda. Okay, yes, yes. Number nine, number nine, hey, is there, do I have a motion for the consent agenda? Second. He has been motioned by Commissioner Sanders and, and second, um, uh, Commissioner Mason. Uh, and so there's been a, a, a motion and a second. Are uh, there any discussion? Having none. Um, we're going to make a motion to approve. Okay. <clears throat> uh, call for the vote. All in favor? All right, it's unanimous. All opposed? It's been approved unanimous. All right, the number 9A, 9. Okay, general item from board uh, for the board discussion and consideration. We have uh, Miss Brittany for finance. Is she with? Is she coming? Good evening. Is this the financial report or is this the ARPA? Okay. All right. Sorry. Good evening, this is the March 2022 um, financial report. March is the ninth month of our year, so that puts us around 75% through our fiscal year. I'll start with our general fund revenues. Our general fund revenues to date are at 68.1 million, so that puts us at 87.5%, so we are trending above the 75%, but as at this time of the year, most of our tax, re tax revenues have come in. And these graphs just show our monthly revenues and our year-to-date versus actuals. Our general fund expenditures, actuals to date are 51.2, and that's 65.4%. So we are trending lower in our um, actuals to budget, but 
generally our April month will be a four payroll month, so that, that'll make up some of the, uh, the additional percentage there. And this graph right here shows the monthly expenditures and then the year-to-date versus actuals. Our general fund totals at this point in the year, our revenues are 16.9% 16, 16 over our expenditures, but you will see that decrease as we get further along in our fiscal year. And our three enterprise funds, our water fund, their revenue to date is 77.4 million and their expenses to date um, are 4.4 million. Our solid waste fund, their revenues to date are 5.3 million and their expenses are 3.5 million. And the Gaithers and Factory Shoals Fund, their revenues to date are 219,000 and their expenses to date are 133,000. We have currently two SPLOS open. We have one project left on the 2011 SPLOS, which is the historic jail project. And 17 SPLOS, we have 15.4 currently in that fund. And at this point in our SPLOS collections, we are 20, 20 million over what our estimated collections were. And then we have the impact fee fund, which has a balance of 4.2 million in it currently. Are there any questions? Yes, ma'am. I saw that you said we had 20 million over for Splash, and I know we had projects that came out of that. Do mm -hmm. you know what the, the, uh, the, the ended result of all the projects being deducted from that amount was so the remaining number? If we deduct the projects from that, um, that's about 2 million, because we did 18 and a half on the overage. Any more questions? Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. So, do do our um, for this time of year, Brittany, are our our revenues and expenditures are tracking where they should be? Um, do do you think they they reconcile this year better than they did last year? In other words, are we are we closer to being on budget and not under or over budget than we were last year, even? I think our revenues are closer to actual budgeting because we did budget a little more aggressively this year. Our expenditures are running right on track of where they usually are this time okay. of year. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Thank you, Brittany. Tina. Yeah, let's switch over to zone seven. All right. It is seven thirty. It's time for our zoning. Uh, Ms. Apple, would you, would you proceed, please? I'm sorry? Would you go with the first zone? And sure. sure. Thank you, Chairman. Good evening, Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, please forgive my voice. I have a case of allergies, so I hope I don't lose it while I'm presenting. Um, we have three cases today. The first case number is REZ22-000004. The location is 200 Bates Road. It's a 9.51 acre parcel. Tax ID is 106-055. Current zoning is agricultural. Um, future land use is rural residential and the proposed zoning that they're going to is agricultural residential. It is located in the Bear Creek watershed and Alcove River watershed and in Commissioner District 1. And owner is Ruben and Jane C. Allen. And the petitioner today is Mr. Allen. So this case was recommended for approval by the Planning Commission on March 22nd by a vote of 5-0. And the applicant's intent is to rezone the parcel from agricultural to agricultural residential for the purpose of subdividing out the parcel for a family member. 
And a little history on the subject side, it is 9.51 acres located in the southwest side of Bates and Digby Road. And the current zoning is A. And we developed with a single family residential home on it. <coughs> Excuse me. For the site plan analysis, based on the site plan submitted on February 21st, 2022, by the applicant to our department, staff offers the following consideration land use density. The applicant is proposing that the lot be rezoned from A to AR to allow for the subdivision of the property into two parcels to allow a family member to be able to construct a single family residence. In the A zoning, we are required to have a minimum of 10 acres, and this one is only 9.51. So this is why he had to rezone it to AR in order to take advantage of the two acre minimum in that zoning. Conclusion, given the fact that the property is zoned A and in close proximity of similar existing zonings, as, such as agricultural residential, along with applicants' proposed uses of the land, staff is of the opinion that the rezoning may be appropriate for the site. <coughs> Recommended conditions. Should this petition be approved by the Board of Commissioners, it should be approved AR, agricultural residential, Conditional, subject to the owner's agreement to the following enumerated conditions. Where these conditions conflict with the stipulations and offerings contained in the letter of intent, these conditions shall supersede unless specifically stipulated by the Board of Commissioners. One, to the owner's agreement to abide by the following. A, a minor plat of the newly created parcels must be submitted and approved by the Department of Development Services. And B, any required permits must be obtained from the Department of Development Services before any construction or development on the property. This is an aerial view of where the property is located off of Bates Road. And we have the zoning map is currently zoned agricultural. The future land use map is rural residential. It shares um, the watershed is Alcovia as well as Bear Creek. And this is a survey of the lot. Are there any questions? <coughs> I believe so the applicant is here, yeah, Chairman. Yeah. So, so this time, we will give ten minutes. Ten minutes for the uh, uh, for those in favor, and or any, anyone, if, or anyone who is in favor of this yes, project, sir. please come. I do believe the applicant is here, Chairman. He's coming back to million dollars, y'all. Yes, sir, I don't need quite 10 mm -hmm. minutes my, yes. yes, sir. Go ahead. But uh, we're getting, me and my wife getting down to age, and I can't keep up with all the property, so. Welcome to the club. Could you give us your name <laughs> and, and address, please? <laughs> one of our grandkids, let them build on, so they'll be there with us. That's the reason we're trying to rezone it. What's your name, sir? Reuben Allen. Thank you. Is that it? Tell us. Um, the reason why you want this particular uh, zone approved? Well, that's why I want to rezone it so one of the grandkids. Yes, sir, I got you. Can build on it, you know, and right now they ain't planning, but I've just got it in case. So I won't have it done for them. Yes, sir. All right. Thank y'all. Thank you. Are there anybody else who wants to speak in favor? All right, you have a few minutes left, so you can come back for rebuttal if you, if you need to. Uh, we have 10 minutes for anybody who wants to speak against this zone. Would you please come? Thank you. This is, this, uh, this, this is now closed. We're going to ask the, the, uh, the commissioner to make a motion or whatever he, he desires at this point. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. At this time, I'd like to make a motion 
that we approve rezoning case number REZ22-00004 with staff recommendations. Being motion, um, motion by Commissioner Edwards and second by Commissioner Mason. Uh, do, we, do you have any comments? Discussion? Discussion. Mission Cowell. Shana, uh, how big is the house site going to end up being? Is it splitting a lot in half or is it splitting out two acres here or what? Um, he hasn't submitted the minor plat at this time. Let me see here quickly. Because the house will be on one of the acres. Um, well, he can tell me. Yeah, I don't, I don't have um, the signs that he's got right now. So. Okay. One of the conditions, uh, Commissioner, was that <coughs> before any construction commence, they have to submit a minor plat for approval. Correct. So they'll have to meet the minimum lot size that is correct. in that zoning district. What's the minimum lot size in that zone? It would be two acres minimum because of the Alcove River and Bear Creek um, watersheds. Okay. And he's got 9.51, so he would have enough to subdivide it into two. So, Mr. Allen, how, how, how many lots are you going to get out of that piece of property? It will not be at least two. At least two. Yeah, if it's two, it's probably four. So you're going to cut out one lot? One lot. And how big is that lot going to be? Right. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, there have been a motion, it has been second. All in, in favor of the motion. All opposed, they pass it unanimous. Next one. Okay, Chairman, our second case this evening, it's another rezoning. It's REZ 22-000005. There is a companion case to this. It's a conditional use permit. Uh, which will be 22-00001. And then there's also the flume that the board previously approved in February, and that was FLU 21-000005. So those will be the two companion cases of this one. It is located at 55 Potts Lane. The parcel size is 32.68 acres, plus a one-acre commercial, which will bring it to 33.68 acres. Tax ID number is 72-011A. The existing zoning is AR and highway commercial. The future land use, which was approved, is now agricultural forestry. The proposed zoning is A zoning, and it's located in the Yellow River watershed and in Commission District 1. And the petitioner today is Kenneth Batchelor, Jr. An applicant's intent is to rezone the property from AR to A in order to establish a tree service sawmill business and keeping the current commercial highway piece as currently zoned. So we'll be done zoning. And just a history, on February 15, 2022, the Board of Commissioners approved the future land use amendment to agriculture forestry, which allowed the applicant to apply for the rezoning and the conditional use permit request for his business. And on March 22nd, the Planning Commission approved this rezoning with a vote for 5-0. We recommended approval with a vote of 5-0. Subject site and surrounding area. The subject has a total of 33.68 acres located on the west side of Georgia Highway 36 and the south side of Potts Lane. It's currently dual zoned, commercial, highway commercial as well as agricultural residential. The commercial piece, when surveyed, came up to be 1.212 acres, and the remaining 32.47 acres is what would be the agricultural residential currently. The applicant has provided a proposed layout and use for the property, and the proposed zoning, if approved, 
will be subject to all conditions of zoning. Carter area and policies, a staff analysis pursuant to the Newton County 2028 Comprehensive Plan Community Agenda. The project site is located in the fol following character area and is correlated with the following appropriate land uses and policies. So the character area is a short character area, which is classified as a rural crossroad tied to preservation and conservation of its natural resources and agricultural heritage with mixed use commercial. And appropriate land uses for this character area are agriculture, residential, mixed use, commercial, parks and recreation slash conservation. Site plan analysis based on the concept plan submitted on February 23rd by the applicant to our department. Staff offers the following consideration. <clears throat> so there's a 32.6 acre tract or 32.68 acres of the 33.68 acres currently being used as um, for the single family Residential applicant is proposing to establish a home occupation tree service sawmill business on the property. So the tree service business is currently allowed in the following zonings, light industrial, heavy industrial, commercial, gener general commercial, and agricultural, with an approved conditional use permit. So pursuant to the stored character area, appropriate land uses for agriculture forestry, this would be an appropriate land use request. And should the board decide to approve this petition, staff is of the opinion that the proposed rezoning may be appropriate for this area. Recommended conditions. Should this petition be approved by the Board of Commissioners, it should be approved a condi agricultural conditional subject to the owner's agreement to the following enumerated conditions. Where these conditions conflict with the stipulations and offerings contained in the letter of intent, these conditions shall supersede unless specifically stipulated by the Board of Commissioners. One, the owner's agreement to abide by the following. A, the following uses would be prohibited. One, chicken farm. Two, confined feeding lot. And three, a hog farm. And condition B, a minor plat must be submitted and approved by Development Services Department to subdivide out the commercial portion of the lot. And here we have the aerial view of where it is located. This one shows the zoning. So you can see the little one acre commercial zoning of the highway and then the remainder would be the AR. Future land use was already approved to be agricultural forestry. It's in the Yellow River watershed, the large part. And this is a survey, an old survey that was done. And then we have, this is when we surveyed out the commercial portion. Uh, should the board not approve the, rec the rezoning tonight, then we wouldn't proceed with the conditional use permit. And if there are any questions, and I do believe the applicant is present as well. Thank you. Uh, this time it is open up for the uh, uh, public part of this zoning. Yes, All those who are in favor, uh, would you please come? Three minutes. <coughs> Ten minutes. Okay. Ten minutes. Good evening. My name is Kenneth Batchelor. I live at 55 Potts Lane. I'd like to get my land rezoned from AR to agricultural to be able to park my commercial equipment on my land and to be able to operate a sawmill. I've got skid steers, dump trucks, and excavators that I'd like to be able to park on my property, so I'm trying to get it rezoned for that. If anybody's got any questions about my business or the sawmill, I'll be happy to answer them. I want to leave the current property that's on commercial, commercial, as you could see with the survey. Thank you. Is there anyone else in favor? Would you please come?
many one if they are opposed would you please come state your name anyone so that portion of, uh, <clears throat> commissioner Edwards, i believe this is in your district would you like to make a motion thank you mr vice chair this time i'd like a motion make a motion to approve rezoning case number rez 22-000005 with staff recommendations. There's second. been a motion and second by Commissioner Cowan. Uh, in discussion? All in favor? Hey, pass you now, please. Next zone, please. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> Our final case tonight would be the companion case to the one previously approved. It's CUP 22-000001, and it would be companion to the, flu, the FLU 21-000005 and the rezoning that we just approved. The proposed use would be the tree service sawmill located at 55 Potts Lane, 33.68 acres, tax ID 72-000001. A, future land use is agriculture forestry. The existing zoning is agricultural residential, which was just approved. And watershed will be the Yellow River. It's in the Commissioner District 1, and Mr. Batchelor is the petitioner. And Napkins intends to operate a tree service sawmill business from his property. And the history would be the same. On February 15th, the Board of Commissioners approved the future land use amendment map to agriculture forestry to allow for the rezoning and this conditional um, case that we're doing currently. The site plan analysis based on the site plan submitted by the applicant to the department on the 23rd of February, staff offers the following considerations. So the 32 plus acre parcel currently is being used as single family residential. An applicant is proposing to establish the tree service sawmill business, which is currently allowed in light industrial, heavy industrial, general commercial, and agricultural zoning with a approved conditional use permit. And per the Newton County Unified Development Ordinance, section 510-655, tree service, A, parking of vehicles and equipment shall be set back no less than 100 feet from the property zoned or used as residential and 50 feet from any right of way, and B, no activities such as grinding, mulching, may occur within 100 feet of all property lines, and burning is prohibited. And for section 510-560, which um, gives requirements for sawmill and planing mill, the mill and any storage areas must be located at least 200 feet from any property line, and 100 feet from the abutting right of way line. In conclusion, staff recommends approval of the conditional use request to establish a tree service sawmill business with the following staff recommended conditions. Should this petition be approved by the Board of Commissioners, it should be approved for a conditional use permit to operate a tree service slash sawmill business subject to the owner's agreement to the following enumerated conditions. Where these conditions conflict with the stipulations and offerings contained in the letter of intent, these conditions shall supersede unless specifically stipulated by the Board of Commissioners. One, to the owner's agreement to abide by the following A, obtain and maintain an active business license for the tree service sawmill. B, the conditional use permit shall be valid for no more than a two year period. Upon or before the expiration of a conditional use permit, the owner shall make application to continue the permit if continuance is desired. And C, no building or construction is allowed on the property without applicable permits. And this is the aerial view of the same location. And we have the dual zoning. Future land use map, agriculture forestry. It's in the Yellow River watershed. And that is their concept plan. And oh, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Are there any questions for staff? All right. 
at this time, we're going to open up for public, our public portion. Uh, Ten minutes. Uh, all those in favor, would you please come? My name's Kenneth Batchelor. I live at 55 Potts Lane. If anybody's got any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I'm fine with the borders and property setbacks. Thank you. Anyone else in favor? Or anyone who, are, who is opposed to this zone, would you please come? 10 minutes. Or anyone opposed? At this time, the session is closed. We're going to ask the, the district commissioner if uh, he would. Um, thank you, oh. Mr. Vi thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to appro approve conditional use permit number CUP 22-000001 with staff recommendations. Uh, here has been motion by Commissioner Edwards and second by Commissioner Cowan. Are there any discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? It passes unanimously. At this time, this is the end of, end of our zoning. Yeah. So we go back. Item 10A with Ms. Brittany. Thank you. I just want to clarify tonight, all we are asking is just for the board to make a decision on the calculation method we will use if we choose to go um, to utilize any funds for lost revenue. So originally, when the interim rule came out, they said you can do lost revenue based on this pretty elaborate um, calculation. But then when the final rule came out, Treasury said you can simply take up to $10 million in lost revenue. So you have the option. You can either do the calculation or just the flat $10 million, or you don't even have to do the $10 million, just a flat number. Well, for some jurisdictions, the lost revenue calculator will be more beneficial because they probably got a lot more than 21 million. So Treasury has recently said in our um, report due April 30th that we have to make a decision. So this is the last board meeting before our Treasury, um, Treasury report is due. That's why we added this on. So we just have, to, when I do the Treasury report this month, I just have to tell Treasury which calculation method we want to. So we're not deciding whether we're taking any lost revenue, we're just basing on the calculation. My recommendation is to go just for the 10 million because that, get, that is gonna give you the opportunity to take more in lost revenue if that's the route you wanna go because we have not seen reductions in our revenues over the last few years. So that is going to be my re recommendation, and it just, it's just allowing you options. So that way, if two years from now you do decide you want to take lost revenue, we're not stuck with just utilizing the calculation method. But I just don't want to put us, sorry, I just don't want to put us in jeopardy of not picking an option. So that way, in a year or two, if you do want to utilize um, lost revenues, then we're, we're not able to at all. So. That's basically all this is doing. Okay, attorney. Uh, yes, Mr. Vice Chair, I just concur with our finance director. What we're um, proposing before you all is just to have clarity or direction on how we want to, if the board decide to use lost revenue. Uh, as Ms. White indicated, uh, the calculation might not um, work to the county's uh, advantage and we want to just make sure if the county at a later time decide to use lost revenue we have that option that's what we're presenting before you all today tonight thank you 
Does it require a motion of any sort? Yes, it does, sir. Okay. Is there, does anyone would like to make a motion? I don't. We, we, no, this was, this was presented at the last minute. We didn't write a motion. Um, I would suggest that your motion would be that um, staff is authorized to inform the Department of Treasury that if the county utilizes any ARPA funds for, quote, revenue replacement, end quote, the county would utilize the standard allowance methodology rather than the uh, lost revenue methodology. Yes. And, and to be clear, you're not authorizing her or the staff to allocate any money into the lost revenue category. You're simply telling the Department of Treasury, consistent with their demand, if we ever do that, which methodology will we use? And it's an up to $10 million. So you're never required to put all $10 million into that bucket. You, you could put zero into that bucket or you could put 10 million into that bucket. But unless you tell the Department of Treasury which way you're going to do it, you'll, you will be forever barred from putting any money into that bucket. And we think you should leave your options open. Mm, any more? Any are, we, any more? are you ready for a motion? Yeah. You ready for a motion? Okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve the recommendation for um, handling the ARPA funds based on a standard payment method of $10 million as described by the county attorney. A second. Okay. Discussion. I know when Mr. Carr was here, we did the lost revenue worksheet that was actually issued in regards to the Department of Treasury, and we did not have any loss in regards to the county. The issue that I have with taking the whole 10 million that's coming in in May and putting it in the general fund, the commissioners voted unanimously last year that they are the ones who determine where the funds go. And placing those funds, 10 million, in the general fund and not allocating them based on the categories that we voted on, that money was sent down to assist the citizens. That's why it's called a relief fund. And we're placing that in a general fund and you know what can happen when it goes in the general fund. Oh, if, Somebody said. If I could. Um, so th again, this resolution will not allocate any money into the general fund. This resolution will merely elect which methodology you will follow if you ever put any money into that. When we spoke of it at the meeting yesterday, our ARPA fund meeting, I think commission, and correct me if I'm wrong, Commissioner Edwards, he asked, was that going into the general fund? And you stated yes. So I'm basing it on your statement from yesterday. So that's why I'm completely against it, because those funds need to be separate, allocated just like the other counties did, based on our citizens and what's the need of our citizens or infrastructure. We had some citizens who came before us who needed certain things in the county. So that's placing a whole $10 million that's coming in in May in one fund. Commissioner Mason. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. So I just want to get clarity um, because I'm hearing two different things. I'm hearing we're taking ARPA funds and moving them into the general fund, and then I'm hearing that we're not moving funds. We're still going with the allocation that our subcommittee has. We just need to know we're voting tonight on a calculation method not to transfer funds from uh, what our subcommittee has done to the general fund, but just to say in the future, if we need to utilize this $10 million for uh, 
revenue replacement, if, we, if by some chance we had to, now we have made a decision if we need to do that, not to say that we're going to, but if we needed to do that, we now have made a decision because if we get two years later and we do need to do that and we don't make a decision tonight, then we're basically stuck and we cannot utilize those funds at all, period. But if we do later decide that we want to use these funds, it would have to come back before this board and this board would have to decide, yes, we want to use those funds for something other than what we've already allocated it for. Is that correct? Yeah. So like Patrick said, okay. we're all we're doing tonight is determining the methodology. And this is actually just something Treasury's recently um, just kind of sprung on us. And I found out in a webinar on Thursday that when we filed our report for April 30th, we were going to have to pick a method. So that's, that's why there's urgency in this. And it was added last minute. Okay, great. So I just wanted to put it out there to, for clarity that it is not to move funds from the ARPA allocations that the subcommittee and this board has already voted on to general funds. It's just to decide the methodology if in the future this board chose to redirect some funds in a different direction. Correct. All right. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Sanders, please. I just want to make clarity. The, the amount that's coming in for May, there has not been an allocation or category set for those funds. So we want to make clarity of that, that we as the ARPA fund committee or the board has not voted on a category or where to place these funds when they come in. Manager. Only thing I just wanted to add, Mr. Vice Chair, is what uh, the director stated. We're simply asking for a methodology. And also what the county attorney stated, we're not saying even 10 million. We want the opportunity if so be that we might need uh, for us additional well, the funding for lost revenue. But it could be 1 million. It could be 2 million. It could be 1.5 million. We're not saying 10 million. We're just saying we want the opportunity if that happens. We're asking simply tonight for the methodology. That's it. Thank you. I also would like to, if, if there's no any more comments, I'd like to make, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Commissioner Edwards. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Would it, be, uh, would it be appropriate to amend the motion or make a substitute motion that states, no matter the methodology we choose, um, the, if, when those funds go into the, when that, that money goes into the general fund, that they are subject to ARPA, ARPA uh, designated uses by this board. Um, would that be acceptable? They, they are anyway. I mean, that you're still limited in the use of the funds but to I, authorize projects. But the it, reporting but, requirements are relaxed. So you can't, if there's a prohibited use of funds, though that prohibited use of funds would remain prohibited that that's my understanding of the ARPA rules but if you would like to do that I mean I think that motion I think would be appropriately made if you ever put money into the general fund I think that's at the, the appropriate time to make that motion but if it makes it easier for the board I that's I, I think that could be added to the current the pending motion I don't think it's problematic I, I, I think it makes it Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. I think it makes it more palatable if we if we make that statement now, um, so there's no uh, there's no mistaken there's no mistake aware about where those funds go or how they decided to where they they are intended to be used. So, um, is it should it be an amended motion or a substitute motion? You could uh, the motion could be amended since it's on the floor. It's been made a second. Okay. Be bear bear with me if, as I try to, Mr. Mr. Vice Chair. Is that okay? Uh, bear with me as I try to state this. So I'd like to make a substitute motion that we go with the recommendation of our finance director with the condition that all money, whether put into the general fund or held elsewhere, all ARPA money is subject to a vote by this board for its use. 
Second. Okay. Thank you. There's a, um, there's a uh, substitute motion on the floor now, and correct me, and the uh, substitute motion is supposed to be addressed first. So there's a, there's a motion and there's a second, and then it's time for discussion. <clears throat> and if I would like just to uh, add just a little bit to that. I can remember when uh, impact fees and splash money were supposed to be separated. <clears throat> and yet, when a few years had passed, it was all in the general fund and it was all commingled. And, and it's supposed, it was supposed to have been against the law. But make a long story short, it was, and it was spent on this. And then, uh, because I survived a long time, I learned that the money had been paid back, and I couldn't understand that. So let us get this right now. Uh, I still don't have a good feeling with going in general fund. I, I still believe that it should be in a separate fund. But however, uh, the, the motion that commissioner that was made, you know, maybe it's the best that we can get this evening. And so, uh, but um, <clears throat> it's better than just throwing in the general fund because <clears throat> when, when people move and commissioners leave, uh, money seems to have just forget about how it's put there and what stipulation was placed on it. <clears throat> there, was, there has been a motion and there has been a second. All in favor of the substitute motion? Okay, all opposed? You pass unanimously. Unanimous. I'm on the agenda is item 10, 11, and it's uh, purchase finance department requesting approval of the contract with the Piedmont Health to provide physical and other services to the cap for the Noon County employees. Ms. Brittany. I'm here. Help us on that one. <laughs> As well, thank you. <laughs> um, this is just a contract to enter in, was enter, to enter in a contract with Piedmont Healthcare. Piedmont Healthcare is who does all of our employee physicals, our drug screening, and those types of services. Um, Piedmont has recently merged, and well, they were formerly em Emory, and then now they're Piedmont. And it's just we didn't have a contract when we used Emory, but now that the mergers happen, Piedmont just the difference of their, um, I guess laws or rules or whatever they require us to have a contract to bill us and not the individual so at the beginning of all this some individuals got billed for their services and of course the county has you know paid them but they keep getting bills so we're just trying to get all this cleaned up so this is just a contract with a provider we've been using for this service for years so if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer I didn't Uh, that was. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Do we do we need a motion motion of this? In that case, I'd like to make a motion as stated by the county finance director. Uh, second by Commissioner Mason. Are there any discussion? All in favor? It passed unanimously. Item, item number 12, file service request approval of purchase of a uh, file truck. All right, Chief. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Vice Chair and uh, Board. Uh, what it is, we're uh, seeking the uh, uh, approval to uh, per go into an agreement to purchase an aerial platform. Uh, we're getting a lot of business right now down at Stanton Springs with Lytle coming in. Uh, we do not have a ladder truck that will reach the roofs of these buildings. Um, this is something we've been working on for about 18 months. Um, this truck will take um, probably 18 to 24 months to build. Um, but if we don't go ahead and get in the skew line to get this truck built, in July they're talking about a 8% increase on this truck. We've already had two increases while we've been trying to purchase this truck at the cost of a little over $400,000. So um, we'd like to get approval to go ahead and go into an agreement to purchase this truck, get locked in. Um, at today's price before July, we're looking at another 8% increase uh, from the manufacturer. Um, 
and this is being purchased out of um, the county 271 or the fire fund. Um, and so actually Brittany's still here to help with finance questions, but uh, right now it's not proposed until the 2024 budget that we would have to actually have the funds. Um, <clears throat> Brittany has run calculations and uh, she's thinking that with everything that's coming in within the next two years, this fire truck will be funded um, to purchase without, you know, capital funds or uh, splosh funds. I know that uh, I've been asked about both, but uh, but this is through the fire uh, tax fund that the citizens pay. Um, but like I say, this truck, when we first started to talk about it, it was 1.1 million, and we're already up to 1.6 for the specialized piece of equipment that the department and the county De you know, desirely needs, because right now, um, any of the building down at uh, Stanton Springs, we cannot get to the roof. We have to call Monroe Fire. They're the closest uh, department with a truck that will re reach the roofs. And we've done had a fire at Takeda uh, several years back that um, there was no aerial truck that would reach the roof. We actually had to access the roof through the inside of the building. So this is a needed piece of equipment. Um, it's for life and you know fire safety for our citizens, and um, we'd just like to see if y'all would go ahead and approve us to purchase this, so we can lock this price in before we get another eight percent price increase. Any more questions for the fire chief? Uh, okay. Motion. Who? Who's going to make the motion? Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. At this time, I'd like to make a motion as to approve, as stated by the chief, by Chief Mike Connor. Second. Thank you. There's been a motion by Commissioner Edward and second by uh, Commissioner Cowan. Are there any uh, comments, discussion? All in favor? All opposed? It passed unanimously. Okay, next on the uh, agenda is item number 13, and it's, um, it's going to be presented by the county manager. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. We received a letter from the city of Covington uh, requesting assistance to support the annual 4th of July celebration. We know that this is, a, this is an event that is celebrated and appreciate, appreciated by our residents here in Newton County. And we uh, are seeking assistance uh, from you all to support this endeavor. Are there any discussion? Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, who want to make the motion? Are there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Covenant for the 4th of July fireworks display. Motion by Commission Cowan. <clears throat> Second by Commissioner Edwards. Now discussion. Commissioner Sanders. It's my same concern as from last year. Um, I'm not against the fireworks. I'm against that the process. We denied another activity that also promotes freedom. We did that here unanimously. We voted for them unanimously and came back and rescinded the vote. There's nothing different from the 4th of July than Juneteenth. And I have an issue with that because last year I did find out that we were giving these funds to a nonprofit and I don't fault the individual because they called me and asked me for a donation. And that's how I found out how we were paying for this and what, what fund it came out of. And it was brought before the board. So you have your pay, even though we have an intergovernment agreement, this money is going to a nonprofit which the historical committee for Juneteenth is also a nonprofit, and the issue why we denied it was based on gratuities. So what is the difference? There was no difference. Commissioner Mason. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just to bring some additional clarity to this particular subject matter, um, I think what's on the agenda tonight uh, isn't that this board is actually giving funding directly to a 501c3. Uh, this is going directly to uh, the city of Covington. Uh, from what I've seen in my research historically, what this board has done whenever there was a 501c3, 
that we would support, they would become an appropriation. Uh, and so all of the current 501c3s that this board has actually offered uh, financial assistance to, they are an appropriation. And so the funds for tonight isn't going directly to a 501c3. It is in partnership with the city of Covington. This board has partnered with the city of Covington on different occasions. As a matter of fact, uh, when, when we were actually working with the previous homeless shelter, uh, when something happened to the roofing during a tornado, uh, we actually partnered with the city of Covington once again. So I wanted to bring clarity to this particular matter that it's not that uh, this board is giving finances or funding to a 501c3 directly. It is going directly to the uh, partnership with the city of Covington. So if there is a 501c3 uh, that this board wants to support, I think we need to move forward as a board in ensuring that that 501c3 becomes an appropriation where we're able to actually benefit on an annual basis, not just a one-time gift. Thank you. And, and I guess you can add to that, too, if you want to, Mr. Okay. Sims. Thank um, you. Go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vice Chair. That's exactly what I was going to state, that this is a partnership with the city of Covington not with the 501c3. If they have a partnership with the 501c3, that's their partnership. However, our request before you all is the partnership with the city of Covington, which is an annual event which is benefited by our county and, and all that's within our county. Thank you so much for your clarities. I am aware that this year, because the last year we was on the agenda, did not mention the intergovernment agreement because we had to discuss this procedure, this process. So whether you're doing an in in, uh, intergovernment agreement with the city of Covington, it's still a nonprofit that's receiving the funding. So there is no difference in regards to gratuities because two government entities are giving the funding to a nonprofit organization. Or any more, Commissioner Calvin? Well, I have to agree with Commissioner Mason. This is a intergovernmental agreement. I think there's a difference between an intergovernmental agreement and a uh, appropriation to a 501c3. I think they're two separate types of agreements. Uh, but as far as governments go, uh, we've been partnering with Covington for years on a multitude of intergovernment agreements. I know when I worked at the city, I worked on stuff for the water and sewer department, um, just all kind of stuff with the city and county. Uh, that's just the typical. That's just the typical way we do business in government, and it's a, and Patrick can tell us there's a state law on how those are done. The appropriations. Uh, are set up in here how much we give is up to us I mean we can make those decisions as we come to um, but I think it's uh, appropriate just make a an intergovernmental agreement with a certain dollar amount to the city <clears throat> whoever they contract with to do whatever service and they're, they're basically assuming the risk on a lot of that. Uh, all we're doing is making a donation uh, or actually a, a, a funding out of an intergovernmental agreement. So um, I think that's the best way and that's just a standard way of doing business with government. Is there anyone else? Since there's no one else, I'd like to also make a, um, a, a comment I think it's, what's the amount of money is it is it ten thousand dollars that's typically what it is it's ten thousand dollars the same as last year correct well just let me say this um i think we had talked a while back uh concerning uh juneteenth day and what we i thought we talked about was a way and commissioner calvin you led the way a way for her to uh, maybe get in appropriations or get some money as far as for juneteenth day and so, and I know I'm just a little off track, but I'm going to say it anyway. So where are we at with that? Because I think that uh, 
just let me say this. I'm like this. You know, I grew up with him in a large family, and I was kind of the baby. And we went out sisters and brothers, but my grandmother raised us as sisters and brothers. She wouldn't, wouldn't give one no more than the other because she loved all of us. And so I guess what I'm trying to say in all about old man's way or about way is that why can't we do the same here? Why can't we give June team days? Because you said, because one of the question came up then was, he said if we gave her $1,200, he said, well, you know, some other organization, which we don't want to give them any credit or call their name out, they will want it too. So you came with a plan to give money to it. And so what happened to that plan? I think Commissioner Mason, and forgive me for earlier forgetting your name because I was just kind of thrown up here. But um, can't we work together and, and put June T Day on the appropriation along with Reverend Lett in the shelter? I mean, I think that's what we need to do. So let's find a way. I thought we we'd already done here. that. <laughs> okay, so, so June, June I thought that was already done, but maybe it's, it's, not, it's not. But here's the thing as far as I, how I feel about appropriations. Whatever we do is like you said. Whatever we do for one, we all do for another. Now, I will distinguish between intergovernmental agreements because sometimes the intergovernmental agreements with the city may be millions of dollars. Uh, no disrespect, but I'm not sure that y'all can handle a million dollars in a in a <laughs> in a parade or whatever, but or an event like that or a one-day event. But um, we got to put some bounds on the appropriations, but treat everybody on, that's receiving an appropriation the same. That's what I think. But I agree. Uh, and whatever that number needs to be, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't have an idea. I don't know what things cost, but there may be some that that have more expenses than others. I don't know, uh, but it, I think it's worthwhile to take a look at and make sure that everybody's treated equally. Uh, Commissioner Mason. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I agree. Um, I think we definitely need to figure out a way, if we can, to uh, help um, for our Juneteenth. Uh, and maybe what we can do is figure out uh, what was the previous cost uh, of the previous parades or the previous events. And let's look at, you know, from a line by line perspective to say, this was the actual total expense for that event for the past two years uh, and then have that presented to us to say okay this is what the total cost would be um, whether that's you know uh, two thousand five thousand ten thousand whatever that total cost would be uh, because we have those line items before this board to know what that total cost is to be able to kind of help determine what that appropriation would be based off of the previous expenses. So, um, and uh, Mr. Sims, I don't know if there was an actual deadline for this particular budget uh, or not. Uh, if uh, our uh, historical committee still has an opportunity, since we're in the midst of the budget, to maybe submit something to us, uh, line items of what the expenses would be um, and that may be a question for you to see if that's something we can do for this current budget or if we need to begin to work now in preparation for a previous budget. I mean, a future budget, I'm sorry, future budget is what I'm saying. Commissioner, <clears throat> if I may, I think it might be more appropriate if we would do that uh, for a future budget because we are uh, at the point now where we are presenting a budget to you all, a proposed budget, and also uh, we would actually have to entertain others who might have uh, appropriation requests. Uh, and we had a deadline, we posted the dates and things of that nature. So, so everyone could, uh, if they had um, requests, they could come before. So if now if we open it back up, we, we wouldn't be able to uh, get ready for our budget. So I think it would be, it's great, but we could probably entertain this for a future budget that might be more appropriate. Great, so would you actually be willing to work um, or have the historical committee maybe set up a meeting with Absolutely. you? Absolutely. And you kind of start working with them now in sure. preparation yes. for the next budget to ensure that, you know, this, uh, we don't get to this point where 
there wasn't any appropriation application submitted, we know that in the, for the next budget, we're starting now, the paperwork will be in, and you can start walking the historical yes. committee step by step in preparation for the next budget. We'll be happy to do that. Okay. Thank you. Th um, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Sanders. This is my last statement. I just want to make clear that there was not a public announcement for new nonprofits to submit this year for appropriation. I asked that during the budget, and I asked where was that notification sent and one was not put out on our social media pages or none of these nonprofits knew that they could submit. I asked that question. So we might want to think about that in fairness because they did not have the opportunity to submit for the 2023 budget. And, and if, or any more, I'm just, I'm just gonna throw my little um, few words in too as well. I know that in, in previous budgets that I've been a part of, that you know, sometimes the budget process have been just a little late to make sure that we got everything in that we wanted to get in. I don't think it, it would kill us in the sense of there's a, a, a you just have to go back and maybe re-advertise, but it could be put in and give them the opportunity. And then there was also a, um, a piece of it where I think uh, we had discussed about a cap or an improvement of a, of a million dollars to do a, um, and I think I had mentioned to uh, County Manager Sims uh, that we wanted to look at it in the budget uh, for Nelson Heights. And I said that we had talked about it and that we wanted to make that two apart. I would rather, and it's just me talking, and I'm, I'm always talking, but I think I'm on it, to be a little late and make sure that we give everybody the opportunity, including the shelter, including that capital in, in a project, including uh, a Juneteenth day, uh, you know, Ms. Terry James, and to get it right. You know, and I think that it, it, it wouldn't be fair to make, ask them to wait another year when we shouldn't have to. If we could be a little late on the budget, I would be for that in order to get this stuff uh, hopefully resolved and get everybody there say, unless the commissioners as a whole saying, well, we not, don't want to do it. The, the commission or the, or the deciding factors up here concerning the budget. So I think it's counting our hands. So I would like if we could, uh, and I what you think about it, uh, Commissioner Sanders, could come back at the next meeting if, if our um, county manager would place on the agenda for the, for the next meeting to discuss that particular item and see if we might want to make it a little bit. So, uh, having said that, Commissioner Cowley. Sorry, I know this is probably not the place to, <laughs> to talk about this, but we'd probably need a small work session or some time to talk about appropriations and set some guidelines in place. Commissioner Sanders mentioned, you know, having other 501c3s, and that's fine and good, but eventually you can get overwhelmed with that, and there may be some that get approved that are not consistent with the county's philosophies. So we, we want to make sure that what we're doing works to the best interests of Newton County. And what people are doing as a 501c3 uh, helps promote the county or provides a certain service or something like that. So we need to put some guidelines in place. I don't think we got any. Um, we don't do it. So I think we need to do that. So, but that's for another day. It has been a motion and there has been a second. All in favor? All right. All opposed? One abstention. Reason for abstaining and abstention. The reason why I'm abstaining, I'm not against 
the fireworks. I'm not against the nonprofit that is in regards to, to the fireworks or the intergovernment agreement. I'm against the process of us being fair in regards to providing the funding for all those who are involved, especially when you have two entities that are celebrating freedom. We celebrate Fourth of July. We also celebrate Juneteenth. So that's why I'm abstaining from this vote. Okay, next on the agenda is alcohol license. Uh, okay, vote. Uh, let me clarify the vote. The vote was uh, three in favor, one opposed, and one abstention. <clears throat> and hopefully one day we get some stuff up here and you can just press the burden and you know who did what. Okay, so next on the agenda. 14, and it's the alcohol licenses. Uh, first reading, public supermarket and company, uh, 0744-13015 Brown Bridge Road, Covington, Georgia, 30016, and, and District 2, and it's uh, applicant, Jasmine, I can't, Obscena. Thank you all. And so with that, is there, do we need an executive session? No, sir, but you do need to call for citizen comments. Oh, thank you. I'm trying to get up out of here. Yep. Uh, next on the agenda is citizen comments. Any, any citizen want to make a comment? Okay. Thank you. Session, I think. Uh, board comments. Well, okay. <laughs> board comments. We we'll start with uh, Commissioner Edwards. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. So, <clears throat> my my first comment is really a question: Where where has where is our celebration of James Brown and his organization? I, I don't think I missed it, did I? Have we recognized them here other than saying something? Okay. I, I don't think we've celebrated that enough. I mean, that was a, we did celebrate? Okay. Um, I, I think that needs to be kind of, uh, Thank you so much. Um, he hasn't received the award yet, so as soon as he receives that, he'll come before the board. Thank you. All right, well, thank you. All right. Secondly, I, I know there was some light discussion today. Tax assessments have gone out, right? And uh, um, if, if you'd like your property value to go up, then it's certainly done that. Um, mine is 35% in the last two years, um, 17, or about 17 this year. So I'm, I'm feeling I will feel the pain at tax time as well. Uh, so with that said, I know you know, you look at economic factors, um, consumer price index, 8.5% above what it was this time last year. You've got, uh, you, you look at home prices. I know a home that sold Monday before the for sale sign went up for full asking price plus $8,000. Before the for sale sign ever went up. So the, the, the inflated prices on the homes and the appraisal, the resulting appraisals or what's driving the home values up. And, and our system of valuation takes those appraisals into consideration, as do most counties, not all, but most counties. And with that, I would like to say, I, I believe we owe it to our citizens, we owe it to me, <laughs> um, especially me, <laughs> that we, we look at other ways of valuing our property just for sanity's sake. And I know we talked about a, a different methodology two years ago. I don't know how accept, acceptable that would, would be. I don't know how successful that's been. Uh, but I would like to know or explore other methodologies of valuating our properties. And I believe one of those includes uh, freezing property values until the property is sold. And then the back taxes on the increased value is paid at, at sales time. That's one that we talked about two years ago with legal. It never got any traction. We just kind of forgot about it and moved on. The, the griping for the, about the taxes kind of died out and we moved on. 
And here we are two years later, and the pain is being felt more than it was in that particular year. So uh, uh, our seniors on fixed incomes, they, they deserve for their commissioners to look at alternative methods of valuing their property. I know there's some other things that are going on behind the scenes for our seniors right now. Um, not at liberty to talk about those, but uh, because they aren't true yet. So they haven't come to fruition as of yet. But I believe we need to explore and maybe find, hopefully find some successful other ways of, value, of valuing our properties and assessing the tax on those particular properties. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Could the uh, county attorney who would like to speak is for towards what you just stated? Then we ask if Commissioner, Commissioner if, I could, come on. if I could briefly speak to that, that you've touched on two, um, two. I'm going to call them schemes for the lack of a better word. I don't mean that in a bad way, but there are two schemes by which you can achieve the goals that you just mentioned. One is kind of popularly referred to as a floating homestead exemption. So in Georgia, there's only one methodology to value property, and that is your property is always valued at its fair market value on January 1 of every tax year, and there's no exception to that. However, there is a homestead exemption, and Newton County has a homestead exemption, but homestead exemptions, there, there can be other exemptions granted, and, and one of them, the one that you're kind of referring to, is called a floating homestead exemption. So what that floating homestead exemption does is your homestead exemption is equal to the increase in the market value of your property. So right now, I think your homestead exemption is like $3,000 or something like that. Instead of being only that much, it, it's equal to the full difference in the value as your property value increases. So, and that's a floating exemption because it, it varies over time to time. And the practical effect of that is that you're property taxes level out except to the extent there's an increase in millage rate or anything like that. The other type of exemption that you alluded to are age-based exemptions and you see those in a lot of communities where, the, where as you hit a certain age you qualify for different exemptions to different portions of your taxes. Either of those requires the General Assembly to authorize that exemption in your jurisdiction and sometimes the General Assembly will require that to be approved by a referendum. So if that is a goal that the county wants to explore, um, it is April right now, and when you blink your eye, it will be November or December. And if you are going to seek legislative approval of that, the, this board needs to be ready to present something to the legislature before it goes into session. So I'll make a note to, to circulate some examples of those to the board members. But I, I do want you and, and the, everybody watching to know that's not completely within your control. It does require the legislative, legislative action. I'm sorry, Commissioner Mason. Okay, Commissioner Sanders. I just have two uh, quick events to mention on April 20th, which is tomorrow at 7 p.m. Commissioner Henderson and I and also other commissioners, you are open to join us with the Citizens Discuss the FY 2021 budget. Um, we were hosting that at the TK Adams building, which is at the Old Cousins building. I don't have the actual physical address, but everybody knows where the Old Cousins High School is. That is tomorrow at 7 p.m., open to all citizens in the county. So please feel free to join us. We want to hear from the citizens in regards to the budget. On May 7th, Girl Power United from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., which is during Mother's Day weekend, I have, in conjunction with one of my wonderful constituents, Ashley LeVay, who I met, who is a real estate agent, and Doreen Carter, State Representative Doreen Carter. So we're going to be hosting a home buyers workshop just for women and also speaking on financial literacy. So that is on May 7th on at the Founders Hall, which is 3615 Salem Road. And I also did something as well, and it's ironic that you are hosting this, well, not hosting, you're actually chairing today. I took it upon myself, and I'm gonna make this statement. 
I'm a person who believes in progress, no matter if it happened to me during my reign or if it happened to anybody else, I believe in us moving forward. And just to mention, because I've been hearing on social media networks about the vice chair position, and I had no idea that she was actually going to be doing this today, and many people stating that the vice chair position had no merit. But unfortunately, if it didn't have any merit, our state delegation would have not placed it in our enabling legislation. It's actually listed in our enabling legislation. A lot of us put it on resumes, it's on social media, that we were the vice chair of the Newton County Board of Commissioners. So I took it upon myself to start a trend. I wouldn't say a trend, to put a plaque. I purchased a plaque myself, designed it, to where it passed on to every commissioner that is gonna outline that you have served in this position. So it'll be placed on Commissioner Henderson's as the vice chair of Newton County, and then it will pass them on to all of the commissioners who actually serve in this role. So no citizens funds were actually purchased. I paid $9 for it, and I designed it myself. So thank you. Well, um, I'm never ceased to be amazed that every time I come to this, to come to meetings, I learn stuff that I assume was done and it wasn't done. Uh, I wish that we could get to a point where <laughs> I could rely on things already being done. Um, but I say that and just in, in terms of I wish that our board gets a little more or even, even our county and Mr. Jarvis uh, Sims over there, uh, he's got a lot of work to do, uh, making sure things get up to speed on some things. But um, just to just to come here and, and and find out that things are not exactly like I thought they were just kind of is either me or something else. Uh, so I uh, we'll hope one day that we get that fixed. Um, but I do appreciate everybody uh, working together and moving forward uh, over the next year. Thank you. My, um, I thank everybody. I'm sorry. Um, my comment is this. We so often talk about, so well, our taxes. So, oh, you yeah, know my taxes is high. <laughs> and uh, I hear that a lot. They don't have to be that high. It's easy. We make that decision. Every time the taxes goes up, we vote for it to go up. If you look consistently with my record, you'll see that I have not supported the tax hike. It's a, it's a lot of people talk about, say, well, you know, the taxes are high, we need to do this, we need to do it. Stop voting on high taxes. Stop voting for them. Stop it. We can do it, we have the power. So I don't wanna just, you know, in me, and I'm not saying because I may be sitting in the middle, I could have did it right beside Commissioner Cowan, and I probably would have, uh, but, we, have, we voted in, the high tax is approving and go along with it. We don't have to. They can go down if we, if we want them to. Now, there are certain part of the government may not be funded quite as much, but we can do it if we really work hard at, to do it. And let me remind, say this is one thing, we talk so much about the, and I'm closing, we talk so much about the Arthur Fund and the $10 million. We got $39 million of excess cash, fund balance, whatever you want to call it. And uh, there should be no reason at all we should even be thinking about the author funds no more than just trying to uh, help people, help nonprofits, and do, and do stuff that we can, the ways that we can spend that money by law in our communities. Thank you. So I don't think we're going to have any and somebody help me. And lastly, I want to thank the assistant clerk and Mr. Patrick and Commissioner Mason and Commissioner Sanders. Said, well, hey, well, come down, JC. He said, you know, you got stowed up here and, and you, you're doing. I said, well, thank you. I come down a little bit now because it's time to go. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's really, we think it's a thankless job to sit up here. It's not. It's something that you have to just kind of grow accustomed to. And uh, I think Chairman is doing a, a good job. And so, if there's no more business, I'd like to have a motion to adjourn. Oh. Second. There's been motion, second. Are there any comments?
Discussion? All in favor? We are officially, oh, oh, let me do this. Adjourn. Well,